She's the CEO of By Erem. I didn't ask to be a role model. What's that like, being a CEO of 28? You can't love the people that work for you. Being beautiful, is it a help or a hindrance? I'm not going to like brag, but like obviously I have healthy hair. <laughs> My mum passed away from cancer. Is there romance in your life? Be the one to have the guts. Everybody talks about the vanity metrics of hair. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Track with me, Luca Allam. I am delighted to welcome Erem Kaur. She's the CEO of By Erem. She's also a model and she's also the biggest influencer and celebrity in the Sikh community. Welcome. That was an intro. Thank I, I'm you. I'm telling you, man. I'm all about the intros. Someone's going to have to fact check that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I'll get my research team onto it later. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good. We were just talking about Dubai living. So it's nice to be in a home. Yeah. I feel like we're so used to apartment blocks and everything. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. beautiful here. Look, for me, this, this whole show is about getting to know people, mm -hmm. right? And understanding their stories and hopefully getting a little bit inspired. And to be honest, you need a relaxing setting to do that. In, yeah. You know? So what better place than someone's home? My home. So Definitely. welcome to my house. Thank you. Thank you. Explain the mug. What's going on here? So you asked me this morning to bring a mug. Obviously, I did not pack one in my suitcase. So I asked my really beautiful assistant to bring one for me from her home. So this is, I believe it's a puppy holding a bunch of presents. <laughs> and that's the whole story to do with it. What is yours? <laughs> Tea lover. Mine's just a good old fashioned tea lover. Yeah, it's know? massive. Yeah, like it's, it's <laughs> size matters in this case. Um, <laughs> like really welcome. I'm very happy that you're here. Um, interesting choice of mug. Perhaps <laughs> next time you come, if you do come from the UK, Pack one. <laughs> bring your own. Um, so tell me, what do you do? Because there's so many things that you do mm -hmm. and researching you does take some time. So uh, for those who don't know who you are, and I'm sure there's very few, but explain what do you do for a living? So to the majority of people that are listening, I have almost two jobs. So half of me is Erem, which is an influencer, public speaker, model, all sorts of things. And then the other half of me is the founder and CEO of By Erem, which is a luxury hair and beard care brand that I started three years ago, just before COVID in December 2019. Yeah. Do, you know how, do you know how intimidating it is to interview someone who specializes in, in hair care? Yeah. as a business it's tough and your hair looks immaculate by thank the way. you thank seriously you, thank immaculate you. um when we were doing some research ahead of this show my wife was asking wanted to ask all kinds of questions about hair care you. right so one of the questions she had is what do you do if you have split ends right yeah. so if you could tell my wife that would be fantastic so what do you do if you have split ends you what's the treatment them. we cannot glue them back together you just have to cut them and start again and try and use as much heat protection as you possibly can fantastic so they don't fray so i hope you're happy you've got your answer yeah. now stop asking me to ask these questions <laughs> um so you've been in dubai how long now um well come back and forth once every few months but this time around i think this is my 10th day of being here okay so yes. why are you in dubai what's the reason so I originally came out here with my dad. He's got his own business. But following on from a trip I did with the, are you familiar with the Department of International Trade? Uh, not especially. No, it's quite like a well-known government body. They okay. organized a trip here to do the retail summit, which was back in March. So that was okay. a really big buyers event. So we'd meet a bunch of buyers. So made all the relationships out there. But I think you probably know this, like in Dubai, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So the conversations kind of fell dead. So I wanted to come back here and spend a long time here properly, like three weeks yeah. to really build those relationships and, and kind of get the ball rolling again. Yeah. And yeah. how do you find the city? What's your impressions each time you come? You know, I've been watching, you know, Love in Dubai, the Instagram page. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. And you know how they had, they had one. It was like everyone after one week in Dubai. Hmm. Shall I move here? Yeah. That's literally the place I'm at right now. I'm like, yeah. shall I do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come back in summer. And yeah. See if you still want to. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, it's, mm -mm. it's more difficult. It hits um, like fifty, right? Yeah, it's it's it gets it gets very high forties. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got your own business. It's your business. It has your name in it. So wow. First of all, talk to me a little bit about that. How yeah. did it all start? The inspiration behind it. Yeah, I'd love to know. So it definitely begins as a sad story, but it ends up a good one because we're here and we're talking about it. So my mom passed away from cancer when I was eight years old. And she was very much known for like being like the mummy at the school gates, the prettiest one, and she had the longest hair. 
And I took a lot of pride in that. And I think your female listeners who are watching as well, they'll be able to identify with whatever your mom or the women in your life demonstrated as beauty from a young age, you kind of take that on board. And that yeah. is, you know, the definition of beauty to you. Yeah. So I grew up and I felt like long hair was a sign of beauty. She passed away. I would be in my grandma's kitchen every weekend and we'd be trying all sorts all sorts of really weird and wacky combinations. Onion juice really works, but it's just like not user friendly. Yeah. yeah. Imagine the marketing campaign. Kids at school didn't want to sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> loads of greasy oils, loads of like yogurt, honey, all sorts of things. And when I was 14, so that took us about six years, we landed upon the formula that is inside my hero product, which is the Biome hair and beard oil. So that's eight pure oils. And my grandma left school when she was 14. She lived in the village in India. I don't think she knew she was a scientist because now myself, fast forward, I am studying trichology, which is the study of the hair and the scalp. So I'll definitely chat to your wife later. And um, I've realized that each of the oils that I have is at a different molecular weight. So it is able to penetrate the hair right down to the matrix, which is the tiniest molecules like umla yeah. that helps the pigment and stuff yeah. and the vitamin C. Yeah. And then you've got the really thick ones like cast that sit on the cuticle. So I grew up thinking that it was the norm, that everybody just had a grandma that was gonna be making them oils. Got a bunch of followers, probably around 100K, and I was getting fired from literally every job, which I'm sure we'll dig into later. And I just thought to myself, you know what, Aram, you cannot continue doing this, like bouncing around, you need to commit to something. And that was the time, I don't know if you remember, when everyone was saying like, Instagram's a bubble. It's gonna go, it's gonna go. And really fear mongering everyone who had a few followers. So I thought, okay, cool, let me monetize it, let me, let me do this because it was the most natural thing to me. I thought, if they don't have this, they may not have the knowledge to have this, let me give it to them. Yeah. Because that's what I was trying to do on my page already. I wanted to be a role model to young girls who grew up without a mom or any sisters. Yeah. And I think often you hear that and that seems like a very niche audience to try and target. Not that I was trying, I think, you know, yeah. energy matches energy, yeah. but it's almost like if your mom didn't really speak English or she's got loads of kids or she lives abroad or she's a lot older than you, yeah. you can almost relate to that feeling of not having a mom to some extent. Yeah. So we launched, completely bootstrapped. How old were you at the time? I was 23 when I first ideated, 24 when I launched. Okay. Yes. Do you mind if I ask? By the way, do you have a safe word before we go any further? Um, before I usually my guests when they come on, I always, I always ask them if there's a safe word. They might not have to use it. In fact, they probably never use hopefully it. Hopefully not. But uh, do you have a safe word in mind? We discussed earlier, I said I'm cold. Okay. But you really like the AC cold, so I have a feeling I might accidentally <laughs> yeah, say yeah, it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're going to keep it. the AC on. Let, okay. let's, let's do that. Uh, but if you do say I'm cold, I'll take it in the, in the right way. Okay, so obviously very traumatic okay. experience. You're eight years old when it all happened. Um, did you throw yourself then into trying to distract yourself with your grandma, working work with her, that building that relationship? I mean, talk to me a little bit about the psychology around mm. that. I think she offered me a gateway to, to exploring femininity, but I think those who have like ethnic grandmas, it's almost like they're not super gendered in a traditional way other than the actions that they take. Um, Cause she was almost just like someone that I would just look at who was a provider for me. She would help me clean. She would, she would feed us cause we were so young. Yeah. But you know, like my dad, he has only a brother. Yeah. So he also grew up with not a lot of women in his life. And you know, I didn't have any aunties. So he would yeah. take me to the barbers and they'd get the clippers. And to this day, the sound of like the zzzz Traumatizing. traumatizes yeah. me. And he would could cut that, up to here. Could, could it, strange, but could have your dad played a massive role in you doing what you do because of that experience? I mean, definitely. I don't think he realized at that time when I was like crying in the barbers that it was going to end up being this like very successful business, touch yeah. wood. Yeah. Do you remember the name of the barbers? No. I remember the barber's name that he was called H. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Great name. You know? <laughs> um, okay. So traumatic experience. You worked it through with your grandma. Is your, is your grandma still, is still, still around? Fantastic. Um, I'm sure she's super proud of everything that's been, been going on. I don't think she has an idea. Like when I go out with her and people clock me in the supermarket, she's like staring at them like, how do you know her? Did you go to school with her? I'm like, no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> is she based in the UK? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So UK is obviously a massive part of your life. It's where you, it's where you spend most of your time. Do you see yourself ever leaving the UK uh, or will it always be home for you? Would you ever go back potentially to your roots? Um, I mean, I've never been to India. You've never been? Have okay. you been? I've been once to India. I yeah. went to Goa. It's beautiful. Oh, amazing. It's really, really nice. I had a wedding there a few years ago, actually, and I was blown away. Beautiful place. Beautiful beaches. Great food. Good yes, vibe. Yes, I heard the beaches are really nice. It's South India, isn't it? Yeah, Goa, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big Portuguese influence there. Yes. Um, but uh, it's a really beautiful landscape. I really mm -hmm, enjoyed it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've never been? I don't think I have family there anymore. Okay. Because they were one of the first people to leave India. Okay. So my dad was and my mom actually were both born in the UK. Okay. 
So I'm like very westernized compared okay. to my peers. So in terms of someone asking where you're from, it's very clear. You're from the UK. Or do mm. you still feel there's, you know, some heritage back in well, India? Well, my blood is Punjabi. So I would say Punjab. But yeah. I would say like, you know, if someone asked me, I'd just give them the short answer of London. Yeah. But then they're always like, so where are you originally from? Yeah, yeah. They'll just keep on. And they won't be satisfied until you tell them yeah, exactly. Yeah. You look a bit too tarmed. Ethnically where you're from. <laughs> so look, I just went to, I went to Ibiza. Yeah, <laughs> had, yeah, a few, yeah. had a few weeks in Marbella. <laughs> Um, okay, so you set up a business. You're, you're in your twenties. Yes, right? yes. Talk to me a little bit about that because that's that's a big deal. Yeah. And you were bouncing around before that. You worked in a few nightclubs, right? You were trying yeah. to make a bit of money. Yeah. All of that you were saving to help launch your. No, I thought business. I was the best person. I got a first class degree from a Russell Group uni, and I thought, oh, I'm the most hireable person in the world. Yeah. And I was very solidly unemployed for eight months after yeah. uni. Yeah, they don't struggling. tell you that when you're in university, do you? They don't warn you. They they, they say, <laughs> yeah, work really hard, and then your career's taken care. Yeah. Of. No, it's not. That piece of paper, no one asked me. And I worked <laughs> yeah. so hard for a first. Why did I do that? I always say the same thing. When I look, when I, um, when I hire people and I employ people, you know, I do look a little bit at CVs, but I never look at their... Mm. their Grace. You know, yeah, yeah. Ne never. It's like, what experience do they have? Mm. Is it relevant? Yeah, sounds mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so you're 23, 24, you're launching the business. Yes, yes, yes. So that was, it took me from January 2019 to December 2019 to, to do the whole thing. And I remember distinctly, um, my dad doesn't have any experience in creating products, but my dad is a very respected and known entrepreneur. Um, so I remember asking him for help and stuff like that. And he just refused. I remember like hating him, okay. but he was like, if I do it, it's always going to be me who done it for you. And you're never going to be able to live that down. Oh, wow. And people like, we said we weren't going to talk about this, but like the main piece of criticism I get is people think like, oh, that's your dad's money. Your dad done everything for you. Yeah. And I want it to be known on the record, it's 100% my, my money. My tips from the clubs that I used. Nice. So I it's remember- It's your money, but it's not your mug. Just it's not my mug. Okay, but For the record, mug. it's also not my mug. <laughs> yeah. But look, that's, but that's an amazing thing. So that's obviously something that bothers you, right? Because yeah. you want to bring it up. So is it something that fuels you in a way also to go out and make it on your own? I, I think people need to be motivated by a goal versus running from a fear. So I try my very hardest to ensure that like my goal, which is very clear, which is to provide for my family, Growing up, to those of your listeners who can relate with a single father or a single parent, you do feel as the eldest and need to kind of step up and fill that role almost because I saw my dad work so hard all of his life. Yeah. So I want to be able to bring us to the point that I think he would have been able to have been at, you know, with my mom, who was an absolutely amazing partner for him. Yeah. Um, so hopefully I've, I've done that so far, but it's, you, there's always levels, isn't there? You get this house, you want the bigger one. You get this car, you want the nicer one. And yeah. doesn't make <laughs> you happy though, does it? Not the stuff. But the satisfaction, you know, when I know that my grandparents have moved out of their house and it was because, you know, like I did that, yeah. that would. Yeah, and these are the big things. Mm. They may not be, they're not tangible, but they're, they're the big things in life. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously very, very successful, but you're also, you also do modeling. Yeah. And you're also, from what I read, you're a massive influence in the Sikh community. So you're, you're seen as the, the, the I don't want to say the word pinup, but you're that yeah. kind of, you know, role model, celebrity role model a lot of the Sikh community. I, I think there's so many amazing other Sikh influencers out there. Um, I think in terms of following, maybe one of the largest in the UK, there is a huge community of Sikhs in Canada as well. So that's a completely entire different beast. Okay. I would never have thought that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Canada, okay. shout yeah. out Brampton. Okay, <laughs> nice. Nice. So how many, how many, how many people are following you collectively, would you say? Across yeah. Across all the different platforms? Just over half a million. Okay. Yeah. And they predominantly from the Sikh community, would you say? Yeah, I would say Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, okay. majority British Asian. Then okay. we've got the kind of like American Asians, which I mentioned Canada. Yeah. And then I've got Middle East because I spend so much time here. You make yeah. those relationships and stuff like you that. You could pass for being from the Middle East, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm with my assistant everywhere we go. They speak yeah. to me in Arabic and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can fake it a little bit. You can learn yeah. a few words here and there, a bit of attitude and you can, you can okay, pass fine. for it. You can fine. pass for it. Um, so... I always start a little bit when I talk about people's stories. Do you have any idea why do you do what you do? You're asking me now, and I think it goes back to wanting to help my dad from having grown up. Because my dad was 23 when I was born, so he was around 30 when my mom died. And he just inherited two deeply grieving, traumatized children. Yeah. Um, and I look at myself now, I'm 28, and I'm like... I can't imagine having two kids, let alone two traumatized. Do you know what I mean? And like all of the stuff that he went through to get us and, and provide for us and yeah. whatnot. Like we were squatting in a house once. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he, he really did everything for us. Um, so is it a form of payback? Is it, a, mm. what, what, what is it? What is it that feel, fuels you? Again, you may not have the answer, but. It almost feels like a restoration of balance. I want to make sure that he has 
where he could have been. I want to ensure that my grandparents are at a place that they, they could have been or they should have been. Yeah. So it's almost like a bit of an unpaid debt. Is that fair to say? Um, like not one that I think is put on anyone yeah. besides myself. But yeah. like I said, I don't like to look at it as me running from an alternative life where we could have been like really broke, but yeah. more so trying to provide something that we, we should have had. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go home later and I've repeated myself three times now and I'm going to be like, this is what I wanted to say. <laughs> Well, you're going to have that translate wrong, so keep it in the back of your okay, head. Okay, fine. Um, you haven't had to say that you're cold, so you're feeling okay temperature-wise? My toes are absolutely numb, okay. but like I'm, I'm internally I'm fine. Yeah, internally <laughs> you're fine, okay. Um, I always look, I always ask this to guests on the show because I work in marketing and yes. work in advertising. Mm -hmm. um, is there a favorite brand that you have? And, and more importantly, why is it your favorite yeah. brand? What does it say about you? Aside from Bayerim. Um, Aside from Bayerim. No, Pandora. So I have been their ambassador in the UK for the last two and a half years. And I think, I believe I was the first Sikh ambassador and I'm the only person thus far that they've ever renewed the contract. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And you know, like, it's the largest jewelry company in the world and- Is it? I didn't know that. It is. Okay. Fun fact, that. yeah. And I think they're very known for their charm bracelets, yeah. um, which I just don't think does them a justice, but everybody has a story. Like, I feel like if I looked at the women in this room, we all have something from Pandora. Yeah. Everybody has a story that relates to Pandora. And I think it's just one of those brands that I feel so proud because it's such a prestigious and well-known and well-recognized brand. But yeah. even the behind the scenes of the way that we conduct our collaborations, because it's, all, it's a monthly thing. Yeah. So in the month of Mother's Day, um, they always give me a different brief to everybody else. So they say, you can just do a spring themed thing. And I think that care and that attention to detail really makes me have such a deeper love for them. Okay. So when I'm like out and about, if we were just at the Mall of Emirates, it's like, I'll take a picture of Pandora and I'll be like, Pandora family, yeah. which I'm sure other influencers probably aren't doing, okay. you know? Yeah. So what does it, do you see something in the brand that speaks to you? I mean, I think the pieces are really nice. Like I'm a silver jewelry kind of girl. So yeah. Pandora is predominantly silver. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that you can customize it and make it your own, you know, jewelry is so kind of like monotonous these yeah. days. Everyone has like a gold earring yes. or something. Yeah. You can make but it it's also own. quite, as, a, as an affordability perspective, it's mm. quite accessible, right? Definitely. It's not, it's not, you're not priced out when you want to buy yeah. a piece of jewelry. Yeah. Does that also resonate with you? I remember like, you know, uh, your grandparents maybe like they give you cash on Christmas and stuff like that. Yes. So I really felt like, oh, it's gonna go on petrol. So with that cash, if it's enough, like I remember being very young, maybe at uni, and I would get like 50 quid and I would buy a charm or I'd buy an earring. So I'd be able to look back at that earring and I'd be like, okay, my baba bought that for me for Christmas in like 2020. Again, it's tangible. So yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great brand. It's yeah. a great choice. Um, and you enjoy being a role model, a celebrity, a model, do you yeah. enjoy all that stuff? Like I, I do. I remember like Rihanna, I believe, and I don't, don't, don't quote me on this because she may not have said this, but um, I heard that she said something along the lines of, I didn't ask to be a role model. But I think like kind of heavy, heavy is the head that wears a crown. Is that, is that yeah. the phrase? Yeah. But I really proudly wear this crown. I, I look at, because I do a lot of work with schools, um, especially secondary schools. And I feel so proud that like the teachers advocate for me or like when I meet mums on the street and they're like, oh, my daughter's not only allowed to follow you on social media. I want them to know this is the safe space because yeah. there's so much out there on social media and you do have to take that responsibility. Yeah, and uh, do you have a lot of haters? Yeah. Does it bother you? Um, less and less, but like it, it can get quite bad. I'll tell you one example. Someone made a fake death certificate of my mom and claimed that she was a Nigerian Muslim woman. Oh my goodness. And you know, I'm like, so I'm used to this because I've been in the industry for seven years, but like, God forbid my brother was to see that, you know, or, or even a, a distant cousin of mine or like maybe one of my mom's uh, cousins or something. Yeah. You know, I think that could I'm be so really sorry. painful. I'm so sorry. You have to it's okay. That. That's not easy. Thank That's you. really not easy. Um, there are some weird people in the world. Mm. There are some disturbed people. In they the all world. found me. So yeah. <laughs> The thing is, so if you get more famous, there might be more of them that can find you. That's the problem, right? It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged um, sword. Do you enjoy what you do? And really think about that because yeah. sometimes you just keep, you get swept along, right? Mm -hmm. And things just go from one thing to another, yeah. success grows. Do you ever stop and say, I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing? Yeah. Does, does this make me happy? You know, like the actual fundamentals of social media is filming content, posting it. We're doing that right now. I hate taking pictures, I hate filming videos. Like my assistant is with me now, Gajot. She knows that when it comes to my day where I need to shoot all my outfits and my content and plan the TikToks, I'm just like yeah. having anxiety in bed because I'm so intentional with everything because everything you post is an opportunity to go viral. Yeah. 
we filmed a video in the beach um, last time I was here and it was me kind of posing in the in the ocean and then some girls were kind of mocking me in the background. I didn't hear, but I kind of lost confidence because I started to see them pointing. That video got 16 million views. When I uploaded it, I uploaded it with a typo because I didn't even think it was gonna perform well, yeah. but I grew like 40K followers off the back of that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm always kind of trying to be as intentional as I possibly can, but at the same time, you can't plan. I, I could not plant those girls who were going to be making no, fun of me in the sea, you know? Yeah. And that's, but that comes across as genuine and authentic at the same time. Mm. Right? And that, is that what more people... Is it better to be better prepared and well-structured mm. or is it better to be completely organic, genuine and mm. just sort of roll with it? What I'm sure you like you can create, a, you can relate as a content creator. Like sometimes you put so much effort into it, editing it and sound effects and lighting and everything and then it, and it performs okay. And then yeah. you accidentally take a picture of yourself in Tesco or something, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just goes boom. And you're yeah. sat there and you're like, yeah. what is this algorithm? Yeah. We need to get Tesco here. Tesco's not here yet. Yeah, you've got Spinnies. That's Waitrose, isn't it? We've got Spinnies. There's Waitrose also. Is yes. Here, but there's no Tesco. M&S is here. Uh, no course, Sainsbury's. Of course M&S is here. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> um, okay, good stuff. Look, we have we have a part of the show which is improv, right? And it's basically, I've got a bag of balls. And in, in the bag are different topics uh, that are related to what you do, I hope based on my research. So let's uh, let's do a bit of improv. Okay, Have you I'm seen excited. what's in the bag? You have no idea, right? No, but I saw your lovely wife making it earlier, right? Yeah, she's fantastic. So this is it here. This is the branded bag right here, the inside track Beautiful. with me. Are they so available for purchase? They are not available yet for purchase, okay, I was but season you. two, season two, Link right? Link in bio season They'll two. They'll like hot, uh, <laughs> you know, hot cakes. I'm gonna chuck this over, pick a ball out, and let's, ch let's chat about it. The secret to great hair. So it's healthy hair. Everybody talks about the vanity metrics of hair. They want shiny hair, they want longer hair, but none of this is gonna happen if your hair, but more importantly, your scalp, isn't nourished, balanced, correct microbiome, all of those things. So healthy hair is how you start. So what is healthy hair? So How did you get it? Yeah, I mean, listen, there are three evils when it comes to um, mainly women in their hair, but you can um, chemical treat it, which is like a keratin, like a, a Brazilian blow dry or a perm. Okay. You can dye it, which is bleaching, or you can heat damage. But I hear bleaching is really not good for you. All three of these things are really uh, bad. All, okay, rank them in order. Which is the worst to do? Probably the chemical okay. treatment because that yeah. changes the internal structure of your hair because you go from like yeah. straight to curly okay. um, or vice versa. These are all pretty much unavoidable for any woman. Okay. You can't really find someone that doesn't do all three of those things. So just pick one vice. Am I allowed to ask you which one that you do? Uh, I, I heat damage my hair. Okay. Yeah, I straighten my hair. Okay. I love GHD. Pick one and stick to that. Don't be the person that does the keratin like a Brazilian blow dry to straighten it, then curls their hair with the tongue and then dyes it blonde. Yeah. Don't be that one. Just pick one and stick to it to minimize the damage of your hair. So if you do all, sorry to interrupt, if you do all three, what happens to you yeah, it's over called, a period of time? <laughs> it's called like a bleach cut. Okay. And it's when you just pull your hair because it's so damaged and it just breaks. So it's like a free okay. haircut. Okay. Not nice. So how long does it take you to do your hair routine every day? So, okay, I'm not going to like brag, but like obviously I have healthy hair. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty silky. So I just kind of wear it straight like this and I just wake up and it's this. I brush it. Okay. Um, but yeah, bye, bye, Aram, guys. Byram.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely check it out. Imagine you said, um, yeah, no, I don't have gray hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do you know what it is? I have alopecia. So this is alopecia areata. You're familiar? Uh, I'm not so, no. Not it's really. when you get like bald patches. Okay. So I had this as a result of CPTSD from when I was 11 years old. So a delayed reaction to, to the grief and okay. the stress of losing my mum. Oh, right. I and I have a that. slight patch right here, but it, it does make me self conscious because when I'm out and about, I'm known as the hair girl. And I'm like, oh my God. You can't, there's no, if you hadn't, yeah, there's nothing there. Thank you. Nothing to worry about. We always look at ourselves a lot closer than the mirror. Of course, mirror. Yeah. of course. And we, we are so critical. Mm. Um, obviously, marketing, advertising, yeah. Dove, beauty sketches, real beauty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever saw the ad. But I remember it. Yeah, really simple about how we see ourselves versus mm -hmm. how others see ourselves. Yeah. And when, you know, you draw what you think yeah. and tell someone versus what a stranger thinks, Very they powerful. look totally different. Mm -hmm. um, and people always seem to look better. Um, from someone else's perspective, not their own, which is a real reflection on society and who we are. We're very, we're scared. We're, we're always worried, we're yeah. always anxious. It's projection. Yeah. We project our insecurities onto someone else's perception of us, but I think it's, it's optimistic to know that people tend to see the good in us, yeah. at least physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, am I allowed to ask personal life, anything going on in personal life? Is there, rom is there romance in your life? I'm cold. <laughs> You're cold. But I'm how cold frozen. are you? <laughs> are you extremely cold? I or think just I'm like frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Double moves on. Let's pick another ball. 
That was an easy start, by the way. Family time or me time? Yeah. Oh my God, me and my dad are literally joint at the hip, so I'm gonna have to pick me time on that one. Okay, yeah. so how would you spend your me time? I like reading books. I um, I love a good podcast, so I have listened to yours as well, but I listen to it on audio only. Okay. I haven't seen the video ones. Um, drive, not go for a drive because petrol is really expensive now in London. Not so much here. Yeah, no, okay. I, isn't it like 40 quid for like a, a regular time? To be honest, I haven't even done the, when I first moved to Dubai, I used to do all the calculations, mm. the currency, da, da, da. I haven't, I've stopped doing that yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I so when know. you go to London, you convert everything to zeroms. Yeah, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's weird, but that's, that's what happens you know, as a proper expert. Um, I was with Chalhu Group yesterday pitching and yeah. we had like a comparison slide with like the AED and the pounds and the euros yeah. and the dollars. And yeah. I was like trying to do the mental maths because I knew this, the person who done it like wasn't a maths person. Yeah. It was all wrong. <laughs> like, thank you guys so much for putting me in this position. <laughs> so you like to read, you write to read books. Any good thing, any good book you're reading at the moment? I love a good psychology book. Okay. Yeah, anything that's kind of about like maneuvering social situations and stuff like that. Because I think growing up without a mom, I lost out on that emotion intelligence that I think a lot of women pass on just kind of intuitively to one another. Yeah. So I always felt like I kind of had to speed myself up and, and gain that knowledge. Okay. Yeah, so. And, and do, you, do you ever have those times where you're just sitting alone without anything mm. and just like, you know, watch the world or people stare? Do you have those moments? No, I'm not like an alone person. I tend to always have like someone with me in some capacity. Do you? Okay. You like uh, a coffee shop? I don't have enough of it. Okay. I would love to. Yeah. The other day it happened to me. I was I had a meeting that was cancelled mm. and I ended up just being in the coffee shop and I said, oh, I'm going to put down my phone. Mm. I'm going to enjoy my coffee. I'm just going to look at the world. And it felt great. And it felt God really, blessed you with that. It felt yeah. really good for 30 minutes. And there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't happen enough though, unfortunately. No. So that was an easy one. You're getting some easy ones. Let's pick it. Let's pick another one. You pick this one, and I'll pick the next one. Okay. Fine. Hold on. It's bad business day or bad hair day. Yeah. So you could go two ways with this. Would you rather have a bad business day, right? Mm -hmm. Your stock price, whatever, lose a bit of money, or have a really bad hair day, and you you know you 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 get snapped up. People taking photos of you, and it's blasted everywhere. Like, yeah. what is what is worse for you? A bad no. business day or a bad hair? No day? one takes photos of me like that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bad, a bad business day would be worse. I think money hair grows. Yeah. Money can come, but like we don't want to lose that. You know? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, hey, this is your question. So <laughs> Flip the mind. script. <laughs> yeah. Look, I think from from a business perspective, yeah, for me, my my business is not hair care. So yeah, if I have a bad business day, that's much much worse. <laughs> to be honest with you. I think guys have got a bit easier in terms of hair. Yeah, right? much easier. If you girls, I feel I feel sorry. The stuff that you have to go through to a lot of maintenance. To, yeah, to maintain. Um, but this is the thing. Like we're trying to encourage more men to be yeah. to be into that. That's why the packaging is so unisex. Yeah. You know, yeah. the beard. The beard one is interesting. So you yeah. said you developed hair oil and beard oil. Yeah. At yeah. when you were very young, fourteen. So it was a hair oil just for me. Okay, Maybe but there I'm was anything with beard oil? Did you mention beard oil it as well? It is applicable for both. So okay. it's like a two-in-one hair and beard oil. Okay. Uh, it, this this is hair and this is hair. Okay. This is skin and this is skin. Yeah. But you need to get it formally tested, okay. um, which is what we have managed to do. But I think okay. men are a little bit more low maintenance. It's kind of yeah. like a one-stop shop. I, yeah. I feel like I've seen like an eight-in-one body wash yeah. in, in like Boots Corridor before. So we've got a two-in-one. So just, you know, one pump in the hair, one pump in the beard, because it's not greasy. Yeah. Um, Does it give that shine? Uh, briefly, and then it absorbs. Yeah, so one of the things I'm really into is fragrance. Okay. Uh, very, very much a fragrance fanatic. Okay. So I didn't want the smell of the oil which is kind of like a rosemary herbal yeah. lavender smell to interrupt anyone's aftershave, which I know is like huge yeah. for people in the Middle East. How, how meticulous are you with the product? Because I feel like you're very, very hands-on, mm -mm -mm. very involved. And obviously you've, you've obviously got a bit of a farmer background with mm. your scientist background, also with your mm. grandma. So how involved are you with the development of the products? Development product, yes. It took me like a year and a half to make the shampoo and conditioner with a lab um, who specialize in really innovative natural ingredients. So we don't use any like unnatural ingredients really. Not yeah. to say there's anything wrong with it, but there's yeah. a market for people who want the natural. Yeah. Um, in terms of packaging, I'm not as fast. I'm not a visual person at all. This is deeply ironic. Yeah. I don't like, I don't really care, but you know, I, my followers care. Yeah. So they will say to me, Aaron, like this sticker is a bit thingy or, you know, yeah. the gold isn't as gold on this bottle as it is the yeah. other one. So I take note from them. Yeah. Y are you a confident person by nature? Yeah. So taking photos, for mm -hmm. you, easy? Yeah, fine. Okay. I'm like a one photo girl. Okay. We take one and boom. Because okay. it's going to be fine. And if it's not perfect, that's just how I look that day. Yeah. 
you know? So what's scared, like what freaks you out? What, what would really kind of make you a little bit worried? This situation, because you're not filming from my bad side right now. So if I just turn this way. By the way, she really <laughs> does believe that she has a bad side. So I just want to put the record out there, set us straight. You do not have a bad side. Thank you. All right? <laughs> Again, going back to what we talked about before, outside versus internal, mm, you know, perspective. You look very great true. both sides. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. My wife is watching as well, so I can't say too much more. Um, well, she's beautiful. Yeah. So, okay. So for you, being involved on everything when it comes to the product, is that because you are, as a person, a little bit, have a little bit of the old, you know, ADHD mm. kind of, you know, very pedantic, very mm. meticulous. Is that your nature, is that your personality? Uh, and have you always been like that? Or is it something that you feel like you have to do at the early stages and hopefully that you can chill out a little bit later on? Yeah, I, I think the latter. I think it's like, a, it's a liberty and it's a luxury to have people that you can assign work to. Yeah. So even sometimes like if a customer service ticket is getting escalated, escalated, I have to deal with that. Yeah. But then I'll go and have to shoot a Pandora advert and yeah. then I'll go and have to do a photo shoot. And then yeah. I'll go back and I'll have a meeting with, you know, to pitch my brand to someone and yeah. stuff like that. So it's a very haphazard job, but if I had someone to do things, I'm I'm a very trusting person actually. I don't really have trust issues. So I want to be able to outsource things to people. Um, I just think you need like a big business to do that. We've got a team of around 12. Okay. Um, and business yeah. wise, no one's ever tried to screw you over or kind of, you know. Oh, so many times. Okay. Yeah, the biggest betrayal I've ever experienced as an adult has been through, um, has been through business. Okay. Yeah. So trust issues are still there or they're all, uh, how do you feel about that? I, I think it was a huge learning curve. And I think that you can't, I don't know how to word this because if I word it in a particular way, it will, it will have okay. an impact on me, you know? Um, I think I learned a big lesson in you can't love the people that work for you in terms of like, you're my baby. Like I love you and I will do everything for you. I remember I delayed contracts for, for people because I wanted to ensure that they could come with me on wherever I was going. And that taught me a very important lesson, which was boundaries. Yeah. Um, and just because, you know, I'm working with people my age, older, slightly younger, it doesn't mean that you're friends. Yeah. This is your employee, you are their boss. And I yeah. think that was important for me to learn at the beginning of my career. So let's put your CEO hat on. Yeah. Right? So you're 28, right? Yeah. What's that like being a CEO at 28? The majority of people that work for me are older than me. So it's a bit of a funny situation. I remember when I was originally calling factories to see who would take on my minimum order. All I could afford was 250 units. And I remember like, apparently my voice sounds quite young. Maybe it doesn't right now. Wait, wait, let me close my eyes. Go on, talk. So I ended up having to ask my yeah, dad. Yeah, super young. <laughs> <laughs> sounds really posh right now. I remember like everyone saying no to me because I thought I was just some little girl like who has a few followers and you know, I just sounded stupid. They don't take you seriously. Mm -mm. And then I remember like begging my dad. My dad has like a very deep masculine, like he's my, my dad's very alpha male. Yeah. Even on the phone, you can tell. And um, to talk to them on the phone and my dad like refused. And I remember I just had a really hard time with all of that. I don't remember the original question. Where did I go with the story? <laughs> it was asking about being a CEO, right? It's, it's at tough. Young at, tw age. at 28. It's yeah. And you said there's a lot of people that are older than you and managing them. Yeah. It's not easy, right? Just getting the trust from people. But I think when you br lead with the stats, you know, like I'll give you a few numbers. I'll show you my deck and everything like that. Then people are like, oh, whoa. Okay, cool. Like maybe let's listen to her. Maybe she kind of knows what she's talking about. Yeah. Even if she doesn't look it. <laughs> Uh, do they get a little bit jealous? The fact that you've obviously been successful, you're a young age. Do you, do you kind of feel the, we call it uh, the evil eye in the mm, Middle East, right? So no do you feel zone. the evil eye sometimes on you? I think God protects everyone. Um, and I would like to believe that God is on my side because I'm on his. So I don't think that that affects me personally. There's been times where I felt it. Yeah. Um, and you do want to do what you can to protect you. But I think prayer really is the most powerful thing. I mean, we've definitely turned this into a religious talk now, but without going on that too much, yeah. Um, I would like to think I'm protected from that. Anything negative that comes my way was a redirection. And I'm not just saying that. Like Gurdjot and I were talking this morning about an opportunity that I lost yesterday. And I was saying, I feel excited because that means something better is coming. Yeah. But it has taken a lot of me falling over, falling over all my life yeah. in order to know that there is a redirection after you, the rejection. So if, for people who want to set up mm. their own business, mm. right? They want to be a CEO one day. Right. They want to be a founder. What mm. advice would you give them? I always say this, and I think you're going to like this, but there's 8 billion people on this earth we are not as unique as we like to think that we are. Someone definitely has your idea. Someone, the difference that separates you and them being successful is just who's got the guts. Be the one to have the guts. It took me six months to find a second manufacturer. I asked someone for help. They found it in three hours. Honestly, be the one to have the guts. Be the one to ask the questions. Be the one to ask for help. Do what you can. Leverage the people around you because I think most of the time people want help. Yeah. Yeah. Love that.
Uh, do you want to chuck me back the bag? Let me let me pick one out. Do you like my bag of bulls? You never thought you were going to be answering that question today, <laughs> did you? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, ah, being beautiful, is it a help or a hindrance? Now think about this, because there's the politically correct thing to say, and then there's the truth, potentially. Um, the truth is most definitely majority of the good things have come to my life because I have a generically symmetrical yeah. face. Yeah. So what if you don't? Do you have to work harder? Mm, I, I can't speak from that. I mean, some people probably think I'm ugly, but like, I can't speak from that. Yeah. Um, I would like to hope that you don't, but you and I are both saying about the politically correct answer and the real answer. I, I'm sure there is. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there is a yeah. different battle, but you know, I've, I've had times, like I said to you, people just don't take me seriously. Yeah. Yeah. In the business world, um, we tend to see a little bit of a bias towards, again, people that are more attractive. You do that when you're hiring, you do that when you're, when you're restructuring, you do that, you know, when you're following people mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. on social, it's just, a, it's a human thing. Um, do you ever think like, if I wasn't how I looked, would you be as successful as you are now? Because that's, that's it's scary to ask that sometimes. No I mean, like, ultimately, there are so many beautiful people, like, in villages that are undiscovered. So beauty isn't the only factor. I think opportunity is another factor. You know, you could be living in a village and be so stunning. Like, do you remember the cover of, um, was it National Geographic, but the young girl, and she had green eyes. Was she from Syria? And it was, sure. it was like, had like a, you remember, yeah? I want to go check now, though. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you'll see it, and you'll be like, oh, my God, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, super beautiful. But did she have the opportunities that I have living in the Western world and, you know, you're having a dad that had a job and all these yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. Um, what was the question? It was about, again, would you be, would you be as successful? Mm, yes, okay, got you. Ultimately, like I grew followers because I was pretty yeah. and because I'm Asian and maybe I was one of the first and only girls, not only actually, there was quite a few other girls um, posting the way yeah. that I was posting. Um, I don't think like immediately based off the algorithm back in the day, now it's kind of funny based, yeah. but before it was aesthetically based. Yeah. Um, I grew all my followers and then, you know, I'd like to think that I gained the attention because the way I looked, I'd like to think I gained the retention because of the points I was making about being a role model and not using filters and not editing my photos, etc. cetera. Um, so you don't do any editing on your photos? No, 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 no. Occasionally I use a filter on TikTok, like the one with the eyelashes and I want that to be known because sometimes I'm forced to film when I don't yeah. have makeup on. Yeah. Um, but I will only use that one because okay. it doesn't change your features because it, it, it almost like anglicizes your features, which is not what I want to advocate for at all. Yeah. So I won't get filler, Botox, et cetera. How many people are like you in the, who, who are an influencer mm -hmm. or a celebrity online who don't use filters as mm -hmm. much? Or don't, are you the minority? I think those that don't use it shout about it and those that use it stay quiet. So it's almost like the norm versus the noisy. Okay. Um, but in answer to your point, like I gained followers as a result of the way I look to some extent, yeah. but I think in order for someone to trust my product, which is what sustains me, yeah. you have to believe in like the brain behind the, the product. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. you got, if you, again, it gets you, it might get you initial customers, but it's not gonna get you repeat customers if your product is not Exactly, strong yeah. Time for another ball? I'm ready. You enjoying this? Yeah, okay, they're so random, nice. they're thought out. Uh, happiest moment in recent memory? I had a meeting two days ago with someone from a group that I really wanted Bayern to be a part of. And he was so excited, he was shaking. And I felt that there's someone who believes in me just as much as I believe in my product. And me and my dad left that meeting just like floating. My dad said to me that night, he was like, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning. And That's I was like, amazing. yeah, me too. That's amazing. Yeah. It just, what, what did you feel like? Pride? Validation. And I was sat in the waiting room with my dad. My dad's like super young, he's only 50, yeah, he's 50. So like me and him were sat there and I was like, dad, look at us. I was like, little you from North London, little me. Like I used to wear my best friend's hand-me-down clothes. Like, look at us, what are we doing here? Yeah, dial, up the, doing dial here? up the London accent, I love it. Dial, dial <laughs> up, I want more of that. He's That's from how you gone, <laughs> Had you gone to the meeting with that accent, it might not have been the same turnout. out. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it wouldn't have. I, I love it. But yeah, I was just like, what are we doing here? You know, who, who, where did God say that this was in our path for me and you to be in this room right now? And I think it's that gratefulness and that luckiness that I feel that even again, like Gajot, she always says to me, like, I need to rub your arm, you're so lucky. But I think it's the belief that I'm lucky. But that where does that come from, rubbing 
I don't know, maybe catching the energy, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Like, can I take your luck? <laughs> By the way, you said something earlier that I loved. Uh, something about energy matches energy or energy. Right. What was it? What was it's it? It's like um, you're on the same frequency as someone. Yeah, but the yeah. phrase was energy matches energy or energy. Yeah, attracts energy. Because I was saying uh, me not having a mum, but then other girls who can relate yeah, yeah. find me too. No, yeah. I love that. I love that. It's really nice. I've never really thought about it like that. But mm -mm. It's beautiful. Uh, right, another one. Okay. I'm going to pass it back to you very soon. Fine. Uh, this is, okay, hero product or hero marketing. So is it more important to have an mm. amazing product or mm. is it more important to have fantastic marketing that's going to get your brand out there? I mean, I would say to beginning it's marketing. Like I look back at that original um, drop of 250 units, which I sold out in four hours and then 500 units consequently, which I sold out in two hours a month later. And I think there was no reviews. There was no before and afters. There was no testimonies. There was nothing. It was just me in my room telling you guys that this is a good oil. So marketing to begin with, um, but then, you know, the product has to stand on itself. I was speaking today and I, they said, if it's a good product, it will sell. Yeah. But that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. I've seen some good products out there, mm -hmm. but they I've just stumbled on them by chance. And mm -hmm. I've asked people, do you know this? And no. Mm -hmm. But then I try, I'm like, you know what? I'm hooked on it. It's yeah. great. But it's they don't have any marketing budget behind mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and it's not very well known. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the world of social media, the world of algorithms, you need to know how to market your product really well to machines online in order to get some traction. 100%. Um, but then, like I was saying earlier, once you get them through the door, to keep them through the door is based all about the product. Yeah. How did you price your product? Because you know, yeah. what was the, what was the thinking about the the pricing plan? A uh, complete guess. What was it really? Yeah, my first product, like I just thought, forty pounds sounds right, hundred mil. Yeah. It lasts about six to eight months. I'd pay for that. Well, I don't know. And then I based the rest of my product's price point around that, okay. and also the cost. Did you look at a certain competitors? Go, you know what? We're kind of we're not quite there, but we're not quite there either. I think I would have, but that was back in the days where I just like put all of my costings on my iPhone notes. Like including my little ribbons and my little like um, biro pens that I was purchasing and writing everything with. Yeah. So I can't I miss, really I miss those remember. Pen. I miss those pens. Do you have those pens at school? I don't know if they still have them now, but they had. There was blue. There was black. There was yeah. green. And you just pick which one. I used to love. What happened to those? Yeah, but the they, rich kids had those. Did they? Well, I just used to steal them. Was that a rich kid thing? <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't a rich kid. I didn't <laughs> even have a pencil. <laughs> Okay, that's a bit case. extreme. That's a bit extreme. <laughs> I just used to steal this, like my friend's ones, but it's probably because I forgot it. Not gonna yeah. lie. So, if you could go back in time, yeah. was there anything that you would change? So, again, I don't want to talk about it too much, but following your mum's mm. passing, was there anything that you would change? Um, mm. I want to say no because I feel like I'm exactly where I'm meant to be, and you know, like butterfly effect. If you change one thing, yeah. like it could have gone in a completely different. Yeah, but direction. this is the world of you know the inside track, yeah, it's all yeah, yeah. hypotheticals. And mm. you, can, you can say whatever you want to say. I think I would have focused less on school. Like I got all A stars, GCSE, all A stars, like A level first in my degree. Like, why did I do that? Yeah. I'm not gonna fire myself because I don't have enough qualifications. <laughs> um, and I really put so much energy into that. Like I was working when I was 14 years old as a hostess at a restaurant and I would sit there with a reservation book. Remember those big old school ones before we had iPads? Yeah. And I would have my little GCSE notes there and I was just like, <gasps> slam the book shut every time someone came. Like, why was I so eager? Yeah. What did I gain? No one yeah. ever asked me what I got in my maths GCSE, you know? Yeah, no, it's very, <laughs> very true. We've never used algebra in our lives since then. Trigonometry. But at the time, it was it was the be all and end all. It was, you had to nail it. Mm. I was terrible at maths. I was, I just, yeah. School, and for me, we weren't friends. I got yeah. to university though, and things okay. changed. I started hanging out with people that I liked hanging out with. Yeah. I studied courses that I liked doing. And things sort of developed a little bit. You just yeah. were mature. You know who you are a little bit definitely, more. Definitely, definitely. But, but school, it's, it wasn't good. The only thing that's scary that they ask 18-year-old kids, like, pick a degree. Yeah. And at 18, you're trying to decide if you want to do medicine or, like, yeah. archaeology or something like that. See, I think with, 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 um, I think with doctors, I have two sisters. They're both doctors. They knew from a very young age what they right. were going to be. It was kind of like a vocation, you know, mm. or engineer mm. or, you know, architect. You kind of, like, work with building blocks and stuff as a kid. But for a lot of other mm. people, it's not very clear to your point. And you get to 17, 18, and the, you have this massive pressure moment. Like, right, pick a, pick a degree, pick a life, go. And come here. What did you do at advertising? So I did an undergraduate in history. Mm. And the idea was I was going to be a lawyer. That mm -hmm. was the plan. Mm -hmm. In the UK, you do history, you can get into law. Okay. Um, and then I followed that up with a, with a postgraduate in marketing and advertising mm. because I didn't want to be a lawyer. It was too much work. Too, too much, much reading. reading. Too much reading, exactly. History is a lot, but law is even more. Mm. Um, and I love the world of advertising and marketing. I saw a few cool campaigns when I was a kid. I was yeah. like, you know what? Let me let me get into this world. And mm -hmm. I haven't really looked back since. So, but that was that only came later. For you, you kind of had this calling. I'm guessing relatively early. 
to know that you wanted to create something new, something right. tangible. That's your own brand. You know, you sitting in your in your kitchen with your grandma, right. sort of coming up with all kinds of onion recipes or oh whatever you want to call it. Um, your followers are going to be like, this guy thinks of onion now. <laughs> Maybe all my family are entrepreneurs. Um, but I think I wanted to go down like a more secure route. So I just, you know, when you just follow the thing and you're like, okay, cool A-levels, okay, cool uni. And like business was a relatively anonymous subject in the sense that like you could go down the finance route or you could go down the complete marketing route. So I just, I honestly just winged it. Hmm. Um, I cannot tell you a single thing I learned from my degree though. Yeah. But you're now running a business, a very successful business and you're still very, very young. Again, yeah. not trying to come across as a super old guy, but you are still very, very young and in the world of business, uh, you're you're a baby, mm. but you're very successful already. So the question then becomes, how big can you be? How mm. how big do you want this to be? Mm. And you know what comes next for you? Um, I, I want to partially exit within the next five years. If I'm being completely honest, like okay. I really want to dedicate my life to like children, and that's something I I personally feel like I didn't have the opportunity to really have a mom, but I want to ha give my children that really focused mother attention that my mom gave me and my brother. And I think who I am now in terms of, I recognize I'm quite a well-spoken person. And I think it's because my reading literacy was very advanced from a young age. Because my mom would sit there and she would read and read and read with me. And I would love those moments. And it broadened my vocabulary. It gave me confidence when expressing myself. And I was so lucky to have received eight years of that. My brother only got six and I can see the difference between us. So I want to be able to give my kids like a lifetime of that. Because I was so lucky to have it for eight. Yeah. How many kids would you like to have? Oh my God, I'm cold. <laughs> Come on. You no, can't. I'm cold. Okay, okay, I'm staying away. <laughs> Let's see what, what I, think there's, I think there's might be one left, potentially. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Three people you would invite for dinner. You? But like you get no, along. No, yeah. no, no. My dad? No, no, no. no. Mark? <laughs> okay, I'm out. So remove me. Okay, so you have three people and only three people, past and present, that you can invite for dinner. Oh, I got You're this. the host. Princess Diana. Okay. Number one, I love her of life. Um, Georgina, who's Cristiano Ronaldo's wife. Okay. Have you seen it? Soy Georgina. I have not. Watch it. Okay. It's really nice. Okay. Um, and my dad. Okay. I don't know. He's my plus one and everything. Okay. If I get to see it, he gets to see it. So what would they talk about? Philanthropy, uh, motherhood, um, marriage. I feel like them two would have really good stories about marriage, especially Princess Di. Fame. Trolls. What, what would you be eating? What would be, be for dinner? Something vegetarian. I'm really boring. I You're don't even vegetarian? drink. Don't okay. drink. Don't smoke. Okay. Your dad vegetarian as well? No. Okay. I don't know a single Punjabi man who's vegetarian. <laughs> okay. Your brother I'm guessing not either. No. Okay. I'm just boring. Okay. And uh, so why why Georgina? What's what's about? Because I haven't seen uh, yeah. the story. So why why her? So she's like a year older than me, but you know she has been given this life where she's married to like isn't he like the richest footballer? Yeah, he's, he's definitely up there. From If it's not from his uh, weekly salary, mm. it's also from his endorsements, sponsorship, endorsements. Yeah. Exactly. So he, him and Messi, I think, are up there, mm. one and two in the world. Mm. Didn't they do that chess picture? Chess picture? They were playing chess. That, I think so, yeah. What did you think of that from a marketing perspective? But uh, was it real? Was it real? You tell me. I have no idea. I don't know either. I thought, again, what do you, when you see stuff online, mm. how much of that is real? I don't know. I mean, I, I wish everyone thought from that perspective because, yeah. yeah, there's probably a portion of the world, and not to sugar back, but like thinks my mom is a Nigerian Muslim woman called Fabiola, you know? So I'd like to think that people have the same critical eye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think she has been given a life where she has had so much privilege, yeah. but she's still so grounded and she's so philanthropical. I think that's yeah, the word. I think so. Um, and I feel like she's very pure. She's also the same star sign as me, and I really relate to the way that she sees the world. Go on then, what's your star sign? Um, I feel like you're gonna lose like all your viewing now. That's okay. Aquarius. Aquarius. Yeah, no one likes talking about star signs. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. My wife loves talking about Th star what signs. What is she? She's a Pisces. Pisces, emotional? She's very creative. Yeah. Um, and she shows emotion in a different way. Okay. Yeah. See, if I say what my star sign is, I'm definitely gonna lose all of my Is uh, it Scorpio? Viewers. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you just repeat that? <laughs> For those who are listening, her tongue came out and she almost threw up in her mouth. Fantastic. That's no, 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 because now all your Scorpio followers are going to hate me. <laughs> yeah, no worries about it. No, I think they're the most misunderstood of all the star signs, for sure. Yeah, We're, we, are, we are very misunderstood. And I've also read something, again, I'm not a big star mm. sign person, but they say 
if you're a male or a female star sign, it's also going to be very different. So right. a, male, a male Scorpio versus female Scorpios yeah. also have different traits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not universally mm -hmm. for both genders. For sure. And it's also um, like what side, what, what try or whatever of the thing, like beginning half of Aquarius yeah, yeah. or whatever, something like that. Yeah. Let's pretend we know what we're talking about, but we both <laughs> really don't know. So from, from let's actually, you know what, let's continue this. So you're an Aquarian. Do you know what you're most matched to from mm. a partner perspective? No. I'm an air sign, so I think by logic it should be like an, a fire sign. Okay. Because those two are part So you need airs. to go find your fire. Who, who knows if I have or I haven't found it. You're still feeling cold? <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly it's cold in here. <laughs> so what, what is your biggest learning? Uh, you know, I want to I understand your own insight. So I asked you a bit earlier on, why do you do what you do? All right. So if I'm going to ask that again, after everything we've chatted about, what is driving you? Like, what is your own truth? I want to say stability. I think that is something that my brother and I just never had in ways that I haven't spoken about online before that's not to do with financial. So I think stability, being able to know where I'm waking up and what time, and yes, I can provide that for myself right now, um, but in a sustainable way, and to not have to check Shopify every day. Okay, how many orders did we get today? Do you do that? Uh, do you I don't want. I don't want to say too much about mm. that because it will keep me up at night. But yeah. uh, let's pretend I don't. Basically, and everything is great. Anyone that has Shopify yeah. that has the cha ching sound yeah. turned off, so you don't know how many you've made every day, is yeah. definitely checking it three times a day. I would like to get to the point where it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I think you're more than that already. To be honest with you, I think it shouldn't matter to you because you're much more than just the brand that you represent. Thank you. You're a great person. Look, it's been great having you on, on, on the show. Such a pleasure. Um, we, we said right at the beginning that you, you said, oh, there's something I'm going to look back. And I should have said, do you remember that when you said it was, it was a while ago? You said, oh. I think it was a reason why I yeah. did this, right? Yeah. Has, that, has that been mulling around the back of your head? Do you remember what it is? Or? No, no. Okay, well, if you do remember, if you do remember at some point, let me know. Yeah, I'll I will next time. But look, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, you come across fantastically well. Very balanced individual. You are starting to uh, restore my faith in the 20 year old generation. Uh, you have your head screwed on, um, very, very smart, very charming. And I know you're going to be extremely successful, even more so than you are now. Thank you. And thank I'm sure you. your grandmom and your dad are super, super proud mm -hmm. of what you've achieved. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me on, first of all. Thank you to your team. Pleasure. Um, and thank you to your listeners as well for hearing me out. I can't wait to see your next mug when you come back. <laughs> all right. It's going to be nice. Though. Take care and, and have a safe flight back to the UK. Thank <laughs> you.